My name is Ratsy and welcome back to Slay the Spire. Let's do an Ascension 15 Ironclad. I, I'll, look, I'll gradually get back into the, the Ascension 20 Watcher Rods, but that, that is, of course, uh, the completion of the Heartbreaker Ascensions for the Watcher. Uh, but I'd, I'd like to de-rust on, uh, on uh, maybe a little bit of a lower uh, Ascension mode, and also with a character that is, uh, let's, let's be honest, easier. <clears throat> the, the skill ceiling is lower, let's say that at least. It's always enemies in the next three combats. It's just, I don't really think I'm going to want to snipe out an elite with this. Three elite path, four elite path, Ooh, four elite path. Four elite path, but I get no snipes. That would be here, 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 here. There's literally no fires on that path either. I do not get a rest. If I take it... If I take this one, I might actually get to snipe out the Emerald Elite. I get a lot of question marks. I also get a rest along the line. We're in Ascension 15, so I can't do drop kick. Shamefully. I honestly do like Iron Waves a card. But armaments is armaments and armaments take the first armaments right in it. Ah. Damn it, if that hit armaments, we would have been so good. We would have been in like Flynn. Uh, twin Strike is decent damage and oftentimes I'm going to want to stack strength. Sure. Take it. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Uh... Yeah, one of, one of the things that I really, really like about this character is the fact that you get six health at the end of each combat gives you the ability to spend your health like an idiot. Like I'm currently doing. Just every event that takes HP from me, yeah, lay it on. Give it a go. Anger, Clash, Rupture. Uh, I don't have a way to lose any HP yet, so I don't want to take Rupture first. Disarm. Who's my boss's floor? <laughs> Exoghost. All right. Well, the song is looking real good right now. Take a disarm. I'll remove a defend as well, just because I removed a strike last time, and I don't want to tend far too defensive. Got him. Emerald Elite down. Tiny chest. Every fourth question mark room is a treasure room, as well as shrug it off. Carnage headbutt. Carnage gives us the damage that we're currently missing in our deck. Shrug it off is generally better though. But unfortunately, especially if I want to go for this elite and I have, you know, one shop in between. Yeah. Not. Ooh, Pandip is helpful. Uh, but yeah, I'm not super likely to be able to pick up the aggressive card here that I want. Actually, never mind. Shrug it off here. <laughs> ah, perfect. I'm debating throwing the fear potion because I'm not going to use bash on a later turn, especially if I draw it with carnage. Really unfortunate that my first turn is the turn that doesn't have the attacks here. Having to Psalm on the first turn was fine, but everything else was... Oof. Right, this goes to 9, 9 goes to 13. Yeah, I haven't got lethal unless I use the fire potion. Fine. Make sure to throw out the strikes as well, though. So the pen nib increments. There's a bludgeon. Specifically because I have a pen nib, I have a little bit more interest in that bludgeon. But the problem with bludgeon in a pen nib deck is that if you draw it and you don't have nine charges on your pen nib, what are you going to do? How are you going to play all the other attacks in your hand and then play a bludgeon? It's very expensive. Like I said, it's a lot of damage. All right. All right, let's give it a go. I'll happily take one damage here. So I can throw you out of existence in the next turn. Flame Barrow because I'm lacking on defense. Unfortunately, I want to take the five damage here because 28 and not burning my carnage is pretty great. Get a... Ooh, that's not what I wanted. I was probably going to ask for a twin strike and a strike. Or a strike and a normal strike. The the strike upgraded, rather. It's obviously just that. Well, 
the back line. Flame barrier, so we at least do some damage to a living target this turn. Again, not too much I get to do about that, unfortunately. If I'd struck the frontliner target, I would have been in a much better position there. Oh my god. This whole fight is playing out ridiculously differently based on the fact that I didn't strike the... Oh! Ugh. Strike this sentry with the... Oh no, wait, I couldn't have struck this sentry. Right, the, the effect was from my flame barrier. Never mind, never mind, never mind. Ouch, though. Just... Ouch. Open up. Par through Warcry Cleave. I have no AoE in the deck yet. Can you take Cleave when Whirlwind exists? Because I'm not so certain myself. Warcry for popping something atop the deck. And hard pass those. There's another Cleave. There's also another disarm. I'm not against getting multiple disarms, especially if we have other ways to trigger the artifacts of Donu and Decker. Disarm is really good against the against the time eater. Unless you take a lot more time in the start half of the fight and then try and set up a two-turn kill to skip the second half of the fight. I'll take it. Honestly, I was even considering Intimidate there. Bash. The extra turn of vulnerability is huge, but also... Bludgeon can't be cast after I upgrade it with Armaments. Whereas Bash can be upgraded with Armaments and then cast as well. It's the primary difference here for me. Great. Turn two is gonna be great. <laughs> See, he is he is a giant problem, right? I can set up for a bludgeon. Or rather, I can't set up for the bludgeon. I can't use the bludgeon in the way I'd like. So this will actually deal 24 damage back to the enemy, and then I can twin strike you. So I deal 34 damage this turn, which isn't that different to the the bludgeon. But it leaves me ready for my pendib next turn. I mean both of them leave me ready for my pendib next turn. This is just damage. So 24, 24, 34. Yeah, no, I just go for the bludgeon then. Armaments bash in the same hand, please? Yeah, okay. Well, you technically did what I asked, so I can't be mad about that, but I have to throw carnage here. So this is a big attack deck. Obviously, what we're looking for is a snack a while after this. Or lacking that, some other ways to reduce the incoming damage. Mm. So I can. Yeah, I'm going to have to go for the Defend Bash rather than the Almonds and the Flame Barrier. Flame Barrier is only 12 damage back to the enemy that turn anyway. Uh, Next turn, they're really not going to do any damage, though. And for some reason, I want to maintain my perfect here. Mostly just to see if I can, frankly. All right, Hexy. <laughs> That'll do. Kill you in setup for the pen nib. Beautiful. Berserk impervious feed. Relatively early feed. Berserk did get upgraded. Like, it's literally only one vulnerable now. It's a pretty big buff, because it used to be three vulnerable and upgrades to two. Now it's two upgrades to one. I don't know if I've played Ironclad since that happened. Hmm. I'm extremely tempted. 
I know that I have a lot of cost in this deck. Yeah, yeah, I'm taking it. You can no longer rest at rest sites as usually a little bit more dicey. Uh, but with burning blood, it's not that awful. That said, uh, this, this deck isn't probably prepared. Armaments, disarm, disarm, shrug it off and flame barrier. You know what? I think I transform all my strikes and defense. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, is it Christmas? Uh, already? Offering? Whirlwind? Reaper? Shrug it off? Impervious? Another one? Also, there's a, another card there among them. <laughs> one that I intend on never casting if I get a choice. The frontliner I leave alive for longer. Hmm. Let's go Armaments, Berserk, Impervious. I think I'm kind of just looking for Whirlwind this turn. Yeah, 10 to all enemies, 4. Yeah, so it's Offering and then Whirlwind. Oh, I wish I could just go Reaper. I mean, I can, but I don't care about killing them. Do I care about killing them? I don't think I do. Not this turn. Not when 16 health is on offer. Yeah, I had to be prepared for the reality. I was probably not going to kill him afterwards, but... Right? Not going to kill him afterwards? Uh, 36, 36, 18. That's down to 18. And then, yeah. <laughs> I'm just off. Right? 18. Two of the... Hang on. 16... Yeah, it's just short. I'm on 34, right? Yeah, I could have done 10 more damage. Wanted to get the extra attack out there without damaging myself. I think that was worth the health, honestly. Yeah, it's probably no time for those now. Whirlwind's way too important not to upgrade. Especially because I don't want to hit it with armaments, if at all possible. I <laughs> ah, love it. Immediately downed. We keep just drawing the best responses we can have. That'll happen when your deck is uh, full of good cards. I don't think I need to play that offering. I'd really rather not lose the health. That's not really going to help me that much, but... Just in case a giant hit happens to land on me later, we can also use this to try and increment the pendant. Obviously, I should have used armaments first there, but somehow I feel like it's not going to matter. I mean, he's pre-upgraded. You can't, you can't turn that down, especially, especially here. Yeah. Uh, uppercut is really, 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 because we don't have any weakness. It's also expensive. The deck keeps tending more and more expensive with basically everything I do and without taking the energy relic after the first boss. It's, it's scaring me because that's probably not going to be a problem right up until I get to the boss and then it's going to be dire. Uh, still take that uppercut though. Had exactly the amount of money for it. So that's not a sign. Don't know what it is. Relics. Okay. 
I want to like Armament's Double Shrug here. It only does 5 damage AoE, but I don't get weakened this turn. That's interesting. Problem is, I really don't want to draw into Whirlwind. Like, that's the most important thing to me right now. So using that offering gives me, you know, only two energy back. But if it draws into Whirlwind, I'm real sad about it. That said, I also need to play some other attacks. So that I can increment my Pendib so that the Whirlwind is actually lethal. Thank heck. So I only need one setup attack for Whirlwinds. It'll be 16 to all enemies, 32 to all enemies. So I can kill the backliner with a Hemokinesis and then Whirlwind and then take 13 this turn. Which actually seems like my best play. Alright. Bye. Yeah, that was a lot of health to lose there, admittedly. Drop kick. You know, right? Uh, probably end up resting here. <laughs> it's the Sapphire Key. It's, uh, let's take our rest. Yeah, I really, really can't afford to eat on that turn. Metallicize? No, we're not in the fights long enough to utilize it that effectively. We don't have strength, so we're not really going for the Twin Strike build, so... What's the ornamental fan? Every time you play three attacks in a single turn, gain four block. Neat. Not something I'm going to utilize at all, but neat nonetheless. I want the extra turn of vulnerability more than I want the disarm here, especially because the enemy doesn't have multi-hit attacks. Or rather, this enemy doesn't have multi-hit attacks. Mmm. Delectable. We'll polish you off with that one. Seeing Red Cleave and Infernal Blade. Seeing Red actually legitimately feels like a decent pick here. If it was pre-upgraded, I'd have already have taken it. Specifically, in our first cycle, the draw that we get from the three Shrugged Offs in the deck and the Offering make it so the card negativity of the Seeing Red isn't that bad. And if I draw it in the right hand, it can be extremely high in potential. I'm not going to take it, but... I think there was a reasonable uh, reasonable argument for doing so. I'll pick up with the weakness and disarm. So I have no other defense this time. Sure. Best I can do. Fine, Armament's Flame Barrier. Just because Flame Barrier really ought to be upgraded for this fight, I'll also make sure to increment the Pendib. Disarm. Berserk and then Impervious. This is the turn that's a little scary, but thankfully I have my other Impervious. I kind of want Reaper to be the one that does double damage here. So if I, if I Armament's Uppercut Reaper, oof, I'm not going to be playing the Impervious this turn, but I will be healing. I'll also be weakening the enemy. Yeah, I got to heal by 15 there. That's, that's more significant than the 6 I end up taking. That The 2 I end up taking. Or 4 I end up taking, because obviously I had to play... The hemokinesis as well. Should factor in that cost. Sweet. Honestly, a pretty excellent fight for us. All things considered. Uh, as many attacks as I can make, so... Back for operation. The start of combat draw two additional cards as well. Snack oil. That's definitely a natural fit for us. I think we're probably in the period of no more uh, now, finally. 
Berserk needs to be upgraded so that it can actually play it, even if it doesn't get hit by armaments. I have no strikes in my deck. Do I still take the bites? Because half of the value of this event is the gaining of the bites. The other half of the value... Removing those strikes! Hmm. I do not think so. It dilutes my deck a lot with aggression. I already have my aggression in this deck. Stop the offering. Okay. Disarm is incredibly, incredibly useful in this fight, so. Gotta make sure to prioritize it. I use Reaper early here. Just because I know that the enemy is going to get that malleable effect, so it has to be the first attack that I use in the turn. As much as I want to throw out the extra disarm, impervious uppercut here makes the most sense. I think I also have bludgeon in this hand now. I do now. Beautiful. Mm -mm. None of those. Kind of a list of some of the worst cards in the game. Upgrading offering isn't really going to help our boss fights, but it'll help our floor fights a lot. Armaments, disarmaments, berserkery. No, I don't need to throw out an offering this turn. Especially because the summons aren't here. Uppercut Carnage on a single target is 30, 40. Yeah, I can kill a single target with that. I just have to accept that I take some damage back myself. I'm fine with taking seven just to get one of them off the field. I don't want to be overly reliant on a giant whirlwind doing it for me. The collector is about to summon, so killing that torch head is actually a bad idea because it allows the torch uh, the collector another space to summon another torch head. See, if I don't kill it, he'll only summon one torch head. If I do kill it, the collector summons two instead. It's just a bad value proposition for me. I will set up on start Ting to kill that at least. There we go. One on a shrug. Lose my carnage though there. You can go for all of those effects as much as you like, as long as you never hit me. <laughs> All right, I'm starting to feel the pain here of not really having a cohesive deck strategy. Literally, the deck strategy here is I've got some good cards. <laughs> that's that's about it. I don't have any scaling. That's a that's a large element that I'm really really annoyed about in this fight. Offering needs to happen now. Bludgeon kills the frontliner by itself, and then it can focus on defending. Mm -hmm. Alright. Probably should have ended up using the impervious there, that's my bad. One in eight chance that this hits Whirlwind, and then I'm really sad. But if it's if it doesn't hit Whirlwind, it increases the chance that I get Whirlwind in my next hand next turn. Okay, good. Which is definitely where I want it. Hey! See, I would not have drawn that Whirlwind if I didn't draw. I'm very glad that I drew attention specifically to the decision that I was making there. 
Uh, so 16 for a 44. 16 needs to be 32, 48. Okay, so I only need three energy, so shrug it off. And then whirlwind. You need to calm the hell down, buddy. Slow your roll. Bash twin Hemo. Good to finally get some damage out there. Whirlwind. Unfortunately, the best I can do in that scenario. I may end up needing to use a snack oil, and even then, I may not end up winning. The scaling in this fight just is not. Not not. You know what I mean? Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. That's a lot of very cheap stuff in my hand, though. Let's get that flame barrier up there. How many attacks are going to play? One, two, three. No. I can't play four attacks before a free, uh, free bludgeon here, unfortunately. Bludgeon 63. 63, 27 is. Uh, the easy math this is 90. 327. Plus 20 is. Yeah, we're not going for leap for this turn. Should be just impervious. And we do need to target the back line of this turn, though. One attack, then one win next turn kills. All right. We managed to make our way out of that fight, but we desperately need an energy relic right now. Double tap makes a lot of sense with this style of deck. We have a lot of very, very impactful attacks. Well, we don't have a lot of very impactful attacks. We just have a couple extremely impactful attacks. But it's not that good with a whirlwind unless I have a lot of extra energy. It's pretty good with an uppercut, but only when it's upgraded. It's very good with Reaper, always. It's very good with Bludgeon, almost always. Unless you need to do any defending on that turn. I'm actually convincing myself very quickly here that Double Tap is a bad idea. Maybe it's Juggernaut? I don't know if I should take this Juggernaut. Ha, huh, get it, Juggernaut. That only makes sense in the, in the context of Dota 2, but... That hurts. It's the only energy relic being offered to me right now. I desperately need one. I hate Mark of Pain. So much. Denying me two draws, especially if those occur on critical turns, is... Is? No. Can be a death sentence. Here I'm hoping it isn't. Whirlwind, the increments. Juggernaut impervious? I mean, look, I'm only doing 13 damage this turn if I do the, the uppercut anyway, so I may as well do five and then give myself the ability to do more with any further defenses. Okay. Start by shrugging. Twice. Bludgeon dropped on you. Some as well. I'm hoping to get back to the Reaper as quickly as possible here. Oh well. At least we got the kill there before we took the hit. I'll take the Pommel Strike. Just because it draws two cards and we don't have that many card draws uh, at this point. Upgrading all these cards is pretty good. They are very, very good. Most of the important ones are already upgraded. Uppercut still needs to be hit. So does Psalm, Bash, Flame Barrier. Uh, 
Fine, we'll give it the boss. Especially if it's this one. Woo! Fight's gonna be long enough that I'd prefer to have Juggernaut out here. Really? I I have a lot of disarms and a flame barrier and a lot of defense in this deck. And two imperviouses. Like the rest of my deck is perfect against this turn. This hand, though, perfectly demonstrates exactly what I was talking about. It's a critical turn. I got denied exactly the tools that I needed. It happens. Both of the sums. We honestly haven't got that much damage we can do with the left uh, rest of the turn, so I'm going to avoid using the offering here. This turn is exclusively defensive. Or not. I'll happily take some health from Reaper. Boss's floor is time eater. Oof. That's a... That's a could be a problem. While I have the disarms, neither of them are upgraded and I do not scale. Tungsten Rod. Whenever you lose HP, lose one less. Happy to see it. Neither of those. Neither of those. None of those, rather. I need something. Flash of Steel is helpful, but Discovery might find me a way out. Panacea is pretty useful. Is it useful specifically in that fight? Enlightenment's obviously incredible for us. So's Trip, though. Sort by cost. So one, two, well, exhaust, exhaust, power, right? So one, two, three, four, five. Like, yeah, if I can reduce the cost of the bludgeon, I'm pretty happy about it, but I would need the enlightenment upgraded until it's actually doing it this whole combat. I think the free trip is actually like the best for us here. Our current ways of inflicting vulnerability are extremely expensive. All right. Consistency. Consistency with the chance of finding something that will perfectly be right for you. Embrace chaos. Taking transmutation. And secret technique to try and find it at the right time. I'm going to embrace chaos. Barry and Pervis. Uh, I'll also throw out the transmutation just for the five damage AOE here. Uh, that's the letter opener triggering. Every time you play three skills in a single turn, five damage to all enemies. Not a fan of this turn. Must admit, not a fan of this turn. The way that I take the least damage is like Bludgeon Whirlwind. Mm, bludgeon. It's bludgeon armaments. Yeah, that's actually not that bad. It's just unfortunate it doesn't leave me with the ability to play Reaper. Frontline is way too dangerous to live. Let's take the secret technique offering just so that I can make sure this turn's worth. Ash the backline, giving Hemo the ability to kill. Oh my god, Hemo has the ability to kill the backline now. You can't turn that down. Disarm you. Don't need the extra energy from Berserk badly enough to take more damage for it. <laughs> exactly what I didn't want to draw there. It happens. 
Well, one's still in the deck at least. Good lord! You're having a rough fight! Mm. Ooh, hang on! Fire breathing! It's actually changed! One of the reasons I want to play the Ironclad in particular is because the fire breathing has changed so dramatically. Whenever you draw a status or curse card, deal six damage to all enemies, upgrades to 10. I want to get the ability to build a whole run around this. I don't necessarily know if that's going to be an Ascension 15 run. Maybe it's an Ascension 10 while I still learn. Oh, this is a card. Okay, well, I guess we're going to do status and curse strategies. Haven't done that with the Ironclad in a long time. Got to shake off a little bit of rust. You know? Specifically, I just need to keep this enemy as vulnerable as hell. This is already looking pretty bad. As far as turns go. Fine. Only turn I'm going to get the black play that. Okay, never mind. The turn ended up pretty good overall. Drop the Whirlwind here is already a complete removal of the enemy's damage, as well as a setup for a Pen Nib. I know that I still have Bludgeon left in the deck, so. There we go. Found our solution for this turn. The only problem is I need to try and set up my next turn as well. I suspect I Bludgeon then Uppercut just so that I can keep the vulnerability for the next turn. I'm also going to take a skill out of my deck and burn the transmutation. I don't want either of those next turn. So that's why I try and get rid of them. God, I'd love to play that Reaper. Oof. All of those need to go. Well, Offering and Pervious are both extremely handy here. I'm just gonna... Double Impervious and wait. Whew! That could've been a lot worse. Shuffle Wound into Draw Pile. I mean, I, I do want that build to go off, so I'm probably gonna play Ironclad next episode as well. I, I can't go over that Elite. I almost got wiped by the Transient there. Not that it's a sad thing to get wiped by the transient. The transient is a little bit difficult. When I say a little bit, I mean very. Demon form actually gives us a win condition. It doesn't synergize with my deck, but it does give us a win condition. So the synergy with my deck uh, is literally just, it will increase the effect of Reaper and Whirlwind obviously becomes ridiculous. Look, I need an out. I'll take a duplication potion so I have the ability to double play a demon form in the final fight. I also, at this point, suspect... <laughs> nope. Uh-uh. Not going to the heart. That's just not... Possible. It's the fun new way that I say possible. I'm honestly tempted to use Armaments, Reaper, Duplication Potion. I get back 30 HP doing that. Oh, sorry, even more because the Reptomance is uh, vulnerable there. So, uh, transmutation then. 
I'm put all of those on the bottom of the deck. And pop another transmutation. Really? <laughs> all right. See, this is why I was very, very happy to heal because sometimes turns like this happen to me. Gosh, I wish that whirlwind was still in the deck now. I think I have a lot of free cards at the bottom of the deck now. Yeah. Oh. oh one short as well. Game. Stop being so mean to me. Jeez. Hemokinesis got significantly better as soon as I got that tungsten rod. Half as expensive for me to cost. Beautiful. Champion belt, whenever you apply weak, uh, also apply one vulnerable. Great. Oh, sorry, uh, whenever you apply vulnerable, also apply one weak. It's the other direction. Nope. Uh, Racing Max CPO 10. Uh, Nyao's Lament... No, sorry, not Nyao's Lament. Uh, the tiny chest means that I want to go to this question mark space, obviously. I don't know if I know anything past that. Obviously, the demon form needs to be upgraded here. Strawberry. Uh, I, I can't go to that elite, especially a nemesis upon which I have bad draws. Just kills me. Having all of the colorless cards upgraded is pretty powerful. Thank you. That's weakness on turn one. To all of my enemies, that is. Not myself. If I could impervious and demon form. Excellent. Alas. Not super pleased, but at least I get this turn. Hang on. I can take out a target already. The problem is, like, I can take out a target on this turn, or I could use the transmutation. The transmutation's already appealing to me more. <gasps> Mayhem. Pothiosis. Drop a Swiss strike on the front line of there. Nothing else? Cool. Pothiosis probably makes that worthwhile. If not mayhem. What? Mayhem made me vulnerable. The only negative in my entire deck. Well, okay. A little bit of HP loss. A little bit of HP loss. But that's... Those usually don't prevent me from playing those. Uh, <laughs> mayhem almost killed me right there. Gosh, Mayhem. Please. Ow. Please, stop. Take the shrug it off. Use that to get the Pommel Strike. Generate a new deck. I'm trying to get through without using that offering now. The, the 6 HP is going to be way too impactful. Fine, whirlwinds. Ah, I should have used blood po- Wait, hang on, never mind, I can. <laughs> right, they got updated so you can use it out of battle. Perfect. Although, it's not really going to make a difference, is it? Let's rest here. Sword Boomerang becomes a lot better because of the demon form in the deck. Hopefully I get demon form extremely early here. Need to make space in hand. Berserk has to be played. I'll take damage for doing so, but it's really important that I get that out. Disarm you as well, and then transmutation. 
I'm probably looking to try and play 12 cards this turn now. Yep, I can do it. So secret technique, I'm looking for the worst secret in my... Uh, worst secret. I'm talking about worst secret. Uh, looking for the thing that I like the least. Probably like a normal shrug it off the least. Then one, two, like that. My vulnerability's gone. Extremely handy. As much as I want to play that bash to prolong vulnerability here, you can't turn down 63 damage on a bludgeon. Especially if I might need to suddenly put this enemy uh, into its secondary phase just so that it's no longer killing me. That said, everything that I've seen so far should give me the ability to stall a little bit longer. Four cards in the next hand. How likely is I play four cards in the next hand? So, zero cost. So one, two, three. I have three things in my deck that cost zero. You got one, two, three, four, five, six. Six that costs more than one. With four energy in a turn, obviously, I can only play four one energy cards or. Some other combination like that. I may play the Hemokinesis here, damaging myself for one, literally just to make sure that I have the ability to trigger trigger the time maze next turn. You know what? No. I believe in myself. Don't, don't, don't make me regret this. Oh, right, we do have the extra energy. Okay, so Impervious is fine now. Sweet, never mind. Never mind. Try again. Sure. So Whirlwind still doesn't put the enemy below half HP here. Well, crumbs. I can't really avoid using Uppercut Reaper this turn. Not when it heals me for that much. So now the enemy is going to go into their second phase. So I'm looking to try and play 12 cards this turn. Not 12 cards, sorry. Uh, only nine. So I just have to play nine cards this turn. Let me just... Uh, that's not going to happen. I'll armaments exclusively just to upgrade that bash though. Armaments doesn't need to be played here to upgrade the trip, but at the same rate, I do want six block. Do I want six block more than I want? Eh, I want six block. Hmm. Looks like the uh, value deck is going to work. Honestly, largely because of the very, very late demon form pickup giving us the ability to actually scale so we can kill the time eater. So that was an example of me, like, especially in the early game, just picking every card that was like, oh, this has a little bit of value for me at the moment. This has a little bit of value for me at the moment. This has a little bit of value for me at the moment. And only just in time did I realize, hang on, <laughs> I've built a deck that has a lot of value, but no win condition. These are the reasons that I need to do some de-rusting runs so that I remember uh, what I need to reprioritize. For the moment, though, my name's from Rhapsody. Uh, it's just been a casual Ascension 15 Ironclad run. <laughs> Nothing right home about, but uh, hopefully you've been enjoying yourself regardless. And hopefully we'll see you next time.